You are listening to the Horse Radio Network, part of the Equine Network family. This is episode 222 of Healthy Critters Radio on the Horse Radio Network. Healthy Critters Radio is brought to you by BioStar US. Find them online at BioStarUS.com. Tigger and Patty are taking some much deserved time off, so sit back and enjoy this mashup gleaned from four years of Radiothon specials. It features clever conversation, listener submitted songs and poems, Hedwig wisdom, and a fantastic interview with dressage great Jim Coford. More than halfway there. Welcome to Hour 7, the Healthy Critters Hour of the Horse Radio Network 12-Hour Live Holiday Radiothon. I am Glenn Geek, and with me in the studio in Ocala, Florida, is the host of the Driving Radio Show, Dr. Wendy Ying. And we are your MCs for the entire 12 hours. All right, and we're joined this hour by the host of Healthy Critters Radio Show, Patty. How are you, Patty? I'm great. How are you? Great. Thanks for joining us. And I hear some puppies in the background. Is that yes, they're helping. Yes, they're helping. <laughs> <laughs> they said hello. That's not Hedwig, <laughs> right? You don't have Hedwig. No, there, it's, not, <laughs> it's not Hedwig. <laughs> nope, not yet. Hedwig hasn't finished primping. <laughs> well, while well, we're waiting for Tigger to show up, probably on the phone at this point. Uh, I'm here. Ah, yay! <laughs> well, welcome, Tigger. We were just talking about about the certain little dog who makes an appearance every episode of your show. Yeah. Hedwig. That was your yeah. idea too, wasn't it, Tigger? Yeah. <laughs> it it was because when I met her and heard her voice, it just made me laugh like crazy. So I thought, God, that would be cool to have on a radio show. <laughs> <laughs> And it's turned out to be quite silly. I mean, it's really turned out to be quite a funny thing. It was the night before Festivus, and all through the farm, the creatures were stirring and preparing the barn. The bridles were hung in the tack room with care in hopes that St. Festivus soon would be there. The horses were blanketed and snug in their stalls while mice strung the lights and sang Deck the Halls. <gasps> and the dogs hung the popcorn and told the raccoons to stop eating the ornaments or they eat salt and dough. When out on the lawn there rose such a smell, a chorus of whinnies and bark said, what the hell? <laughs> The barn cat leaped up and climbed straight up the tree. The dogs ran outside to see who it could be. The moon on the pasture of the new fallen snow gave the dogs a clear view of the figure in tow. When what to their wondering eyes did appear but a big John Deere tractor pulled by giant reindeer. With a little old driver who looked like a fox who called out to the dogs, Where's the bagel and locks? More rapids and fox sounds, the reindeer did fly. The fox whistled and told it as their name, she did cry. Now Basher, now Lancer, now Panzer, and Vision. On Gromit, on Stupid, on Bonner, and Nixon. To the pasture, to the barn, through all the snow, it's festive this time. The fox sang through the cold. So over to the barn, the reindeer did fly. Pulling John Deere and the fox to the small petty sky. And then in a twinkling, the fox did dismount. The reindeer snorted and whispered, he needs a time out. St. Festivus Fox strode into the stable, scanned the aisle quickly, and announced, where's the cable? Dead, I mean him. <laughs> the horses pawed eagerly because they knew well the airing of grievances would allow them to tell. How they have endured human tears and frustration to say nothing of that who need a vacation. The fox's eyes, how they twinkled, lips in a grin, because the mice had discovered a flask full of gin. He had a plump face and a round little belly from the meal he had eaten at a festivus deli. Ho, ho, ho. He drank from the gin flask and set up a pole. The festivus celebration was ready to roll. He let out the horses, told the dogs to chase cats, while the raccoons climbed the pole like two acrobats. He sprang to his John Deere, to his team, gave a yell, and away they all flew to Rossini's William Tell. But the dogs heard him exclaim as he flew through the night, Happy Festivus to all, this is a Seinfeld copyright. <laughs> Ha ha ha! 
Well, guys, that was a lot of fun. Did you hear your your little poem came out great? It did. I can't believe it. I still can't believe Tigger did that. I, I, you amaze me. You amaze me, Tigger. I added the sound effects because I yeah, thought it was. Glenn sound effects. <laughs> I know my face hurts from smiling because it was just like <laughs> it was so good. Well, you oh know, my who gosh, the star that... of your show isn't you two, so you better introduce the star because she is it, is it a he or she? I've never figured that out. It's a she. Okay, she is impatiently it's a she. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Glenn. Hedwig hates me anyway, so it's fine. Uh, so she is impatiently waiting. You better get to her. She's going to have a conniption. Well, you always have to be careful, though, because she is the, the head cheese person, right? Except I think I am figuring out how to open the refrigerator, in which case I am golden. <laughs> this is so not good. This is so. But Hedwig, don't you have to be good like children to be able to get good Christmas presents on Christmas Day? Or are you just always getting pres- presents every day? Well, I mean, what I'm hoping for, of course, is the private jet I've been wanting. <laughs> and I don't see why I shouldn't get that because I want a jet and I don't like flying commercial. I find it to be very oppressive and not it does like not a, recognize my like needs. A, okay. And and um, have you flown a lot, Hedwig? Enough to know that I do not want that to fly commercial like again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Stupid me. <laughs> What's wrong with you, Patty? <laughs> I, it was just dumb. I did. <laughs> so, Hedwig, do you have any plans for Christmas? Are you gonna? Um, are you heading down to Florida with your servant? Well, no. For Christmas itself, we stay here at the farm, and then we go to our grandmother's in Rochester, New York. First to our grandfather, and then to the grandmother in upstate New York. Both of them, yes. And okay. then we come home. And then we go to Florida. Oh, I bet that's you're ready for that. Mm, yes. By the Did, time we get in the car to drive for 24 hours, we are pretty well done with humans. <laughs> <laughs> so number one on your Christmas list is a jet. Hedwig, I got to tell you, when we're in the car with other humans for 24 hours, we're done with humans, too. That's true. I, yeah, Good yeah, point. Yeah. <laughs> a really good point. Oh, well, that's that's a whole other situation, of course. (laughs) She's very tedious on long drives. Do you know that she expects us to sometimes wake up? (laughs) (laughs) Go to the bathroom, those little things. Yeah. (laughs) Rude. (laughs) Hedwig, thank you for joining us. This is the Johnson Family Christmas contribution to the 2016 HRN Radiothon. You've heard Philip and Wendy, sometimes Coach Jen, Debbie and Lena, let's not forget Glenn. But do you recall the most famous show host of all? Hedwig the Pomeranian from the Healthy Critter Show tackles all the tough questions Jamie Jennings doesn't know. All of the hosts adore her, even with a funny name. Hedwig the Pomeranian joins in all the HRN games. Then one frosty Christmas Eve, Glenn came home to see. The host had wrapped his gifts in gold underneath the Christmas tree. Now Hedwig the Pomeranian is on the Healthy Critter Show. She'll answer all those vet questions Jamie Jennings never knows. All of the hosts adore her as she yips and barks with glee. Hedwig the Pomeranian is making podcast history. I ripped the halter off Joker's head. Somebody snitched on me. 
I stole the hay net from glory instead. Some money snitched on me. I tore a hole in Bindi's rug. Found the supplements and smashed the jug. Tried to kill Mr. Next Door's pug. Some money snitched on me. Oh, I'm getting nothing for Christmas. Mom and the neighbors are mad. I'm getting nothing for Christmas. Cause I ain't been nothing but bad. I kicked the stall to make it break. Some money snitched on me. I purposely stomped on the last good rake. Some money snitched on me. With help, I pushed down the garden fence. Got a tummy ache from rotten plants. Forgot how to lunge and did a hind leg dance. Some money snitched on me. Oh, I'm getting nothing for Christmas. Mom and the neighbors are mad. I'm getting nothing for Christmas. Cause I ain't been nothing but bad. I won't be seeing Santa Claus. Some money snitched on me. He won't come visit me because some money snitched on me. Next year I'll be going straight. Next year I'll be good. Just wait. I'd start now, but it's too late. Some money snitched on me. Oh, I'm getting nothing for Christmas. Mom and the neighbors are mad. I'm getting nothing for Christmas. Cause I ain't been nothing but bad. So you better be good whatever you do. Cause if you're bad, I'm warning you. You'll get nothing for Christmas. This means you, ponies. Well, that was Auditors Susan and Elizabeth. Thank you so much, guys. Well, you guys, thank you so much for joining us today. Patty, I know you have horses. Did you pick one to have a resolution? Tell us about your horse's resolution. Um. My horses have a couple. Um, okay. There's <clears throat> one of them was um, they want me to watch the carbs coming up this new year. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's been a theme today too, by the way. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I got one request uh, for shorter spurs. I don't know what they're talking about, but the biggest thing was is to, they want to learn how to be invisible, or they want me to buy them camouflage. <laughs> I'm noting a theme. <laughs> yes, I'm noting a theme, too. Love yeah. for you is the theme. They love you, apparently. That's kind of what I was thinking. Yeah, Thanks, Glenn. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome. And, uh, Tigger, you, do you have a horse right now? Of course I do. Oh. Okay. Yep. Tell us about She's your horse. He's Pony Central. Yep. <laughs> he's, he's 32 years old. I've had him since really? he was Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, cute. That's Ridden so all the way to Grand Prix with him. So um, I asked him about his New Year's resolution for 2019, and this was his answer. I want more beer. I don't want beer just on a hot day. I don't want beer just on a humid day. I want Guinness beer every single day starting January 1, 2019. Okay, for the mm. listeners who don't that. know, they do a show about whole foods and healthy eating. And <laughs> Yeah. Well, Guinness is healthy. <laughs> what, it is point, healthy. Glenn? It's yeah, all natural. Where are we going with this? <laughs> <laughs> he just, I think he just figured that we don't have to worry about him becoming an alcoholic because it now, I mean, to be the age of 33, who the hell cares? I was going to say, who cares? <laughs> I mean, really. That's true. I can't even, yeah. I'm about I, that age, too. I just don't care. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> about the same age. Yeah. Agreed. <laughs> Yeah. I'll tell you what we could do while we're waiting is we could uh, play your song. Now, dumb, Jennifer, dumb, dumb. <laughs> Jennifer had to cut this down a little bit because apparently it was 25 minutes long. Um, That's because of her mistakes. I'm just going to put that out there. Tigger, are you backing me on this? Totally. <laughs> I did hear that being recorded from Jennifer's side that night, and it did yeah. sound like my wife was uh, messing it up on a regular basis. So, so it's kind of adorable, I got to say, because I've never heard her in 
all this time ever <laughs> heard her do anything wrong. It brought me great joy. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, here is the 13 days of Christmas, and it's basically two verses. It's about two minutes long. Here we go. Okay. The 13 days of Christmas, according to Healthy Critters. The twelfth day of Christmas, my food has gave me twelve bad appointments. Eleven tons of shavings. Ten pigs of guinea. Nine free-range llamas. Eight strongid warmers. Seven pomeranians. Six retired greyhounds. Five pounds of cheese. Four Maine coons. Three silky chickens. Two Australian shepherds. And a warm blood beneath the apple tree. On the 13th day of Christmas, I gave back to my true love. Well, bad appointments. 11 tons of shavings. 10 pigs of guinea. 9 free-range llamas. 8 strongid wormers. 7 pomeranians. But I kept the 6 retired greyhounds. 5 <laughs> pounds of cheese. We're not left to give back. 4 Maine coons. 3 silky chickens. Two Australian shepherds, but not the warm blood beneath the apple tree. (laughs) That's exhausting. (laughs) Now you know why we didn't make you all listen to all 12 verses of this. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I need a nap. (laughs) So I have a Christmas trivia. You guys want to play? I've been saving this for you guys, actually. Yes. Okay. (laughs) All right, so these are tough. These are really tough. All right, how many reindeer did Santa Claus have? Eleven. Hetty, how many reindeer? Nine. Yes, Hetty gets it right. (laughs) Look at Hetty. All right, Hetty, you're on a roll. What are the names of Santa's reindeer? Oh. Donner, Blitzen, Cupid, Stupid. <laughs> You're right. Continue. Ah, uh, Rudolph, the one with the nasal issues. <laughs> um, stupid. Blitz. Forget that one. Donner. That one isn't a bed horse. Donner. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's right. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> Fixin. That's one. That is. A female fox or quite a harlot, depending on context. (laughs) (laughs) Tigger's gone, guys. (laughs) That was all correct. You got all of those right. The only one you missed was Dasher. It's the only one you missed. That one. Yeah. Oh, Yep. Not important. You really only need eight. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So, now the question, while you're on this roll right here, we have to continue with you, Hetty. Um, Did Rudolph have antlers? Glenn, Rudolph is not real. (laughs) (laughs) So there. I don't don't know how to break this to you without shattering your tiny heart, but (laughs) Rudolph is a story that we tell to children to try to make them understand that individuality is okay. <laughs> true. That was deep. Yeah, man. the fact that a Pomeranian thought that deeply is really, really impressing me right I now. I'm so watching Rudolph the Red Nose Winkler because <laughs> I'm going to look at it a whole different way. <laughs> yeah, me too. Not something to silence my children. <laughs> I'm going to watch it. <laughs> Patty, I have a question for you. Uh, okay. Which state can... produces the most Christmas trees? Oregon. Oregon. <laughs> Patty, you get you were that was for Patty, no. and you gave it no, away. I, my voice broke. That was me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, You're right. You were absolutely <laughs> right. How did Hetty know that? Um, this is a smarter yeah, Pomeranian than I give him credit them. for. How about uh, uh, the next state? You'll never guess this one for the most Christmas trees. New North Jersey. <laughs> New Jersey. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> oh, we had we had a small Christmas tree farm and that's why I said it. Did you New really? Jersey. And when I say small, it was like, you know, 10. 12 trees. It was 10, <laughs> 10, trees. Yeah, 10 trees. They had one each year. They sold one each year. <laughs> North Carolina, by the way, was number five. Number two is Michigan. 
of all states. Really? Yeah. Michigan and then California and then Pennsylvania, and then North Carolina. That's wow. interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't have guessed that. Uh, I have a tough one for, for Tigger. Okay. How many verses are in the song, The Twelve Days of Christmas? <laughs> uh, Thirteen. No, it's 12. I know. <laughs> but it made you think when I asked the question that way, it makes you go, well, maybe well, one of those is an extra verse. It's repeated. Yes, exactly. Well, that's what I, because I was just like, wait a second, I could have answered that one. And then, I, and then I was like, wait, no, I can't. Hetty, I got one for you. In, in the song, I Saw Mommy Kissing Santa Claus, which is one of my least favorite Christmas songs of all time. What does mommy do to Santa Claus? <laughs> Are you asking? I'm sorry, I asked Teddy actually. <laughs> Let me begin, Glenn, by saying we agree on something. That song is repulsive and disturbing, <laughs> and the site of many childhood nightmares, I think. <laughs> That's probably true, Eddie. So what does what does mommy do to Santa Claus, Eddie? Um, this is a, a public show, Glenn. <laughs> 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 Does it have something to do with where you keep your cell phone? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, actually, it's much simpler than that, guys. You guys are all got your mind in the gutter. Hetty started it. <laughs> it's t- actually it's tickles him. That's what I happened. thought. He kisses him. Well, he he, uh, him. he tickles him first. Jeez. All right, let's. Uh, oh, I got one more question, Hetty. This is for you, and it's serious. Uh oh. Is your Christmas tree edible? My Christmas tree? Is it edible? No. Brr, wrong. You can eat parts of a Christmas tree. It won't hurt you. And really? Yeah, Tigger would know that. She's a, she does healthy foods. You, you, when you, realize you, just, you just told a Pomeranian who has eaten way too much gum <laughs> and I believe chocolate in the last year for like coffee beans. yeah that it's okay to eat part of the tree I guarantee you the servant will be calling you and speaking very sternly to you from the emergency room yeah, yeah I get the bill I'm gonna get he's gonna send me the bill that's what's yeah. gonna happen I may say Glenn why would I eat something for me that's ridiculous it's way more fun to eat chocolate covered in can't you hear those bells? Can't you hear those bells? Can't you hear those bells? And you're, you can introduce your guest. We got him ready. Ah, oh, Jim Coford is um, a really good friend of both Patty and I. Mm. We have known him for many years. He's a excellent rider. He's a terrific human being, and and I have to say that I don't think anybody can ride to music like he can. I, I mean, he really makes dressage musical freestyle worth watching. So I'm thrilled to say that we have Jim Coford on this very special live Radiothon show. Hey, guys. Uh, glad to be here. Hey, Jim. <laughs> How are you? Yes, Patty. Hello. I thought he wasn't really happy to be here for a minute. I was like, I've yeah. come on with these two again. Yeah. <laughs> no, Jim doesn't react the way you do, Glenn. We don't irritate him. Welcome, <laughs> well, welcome Jim. So I, uh, I, I asked hey Jim ahead of time what was some of the – a funny – something funny that one of his horses has done. So uh, we, I, I'm sure that there are many, Jim. Have that's you come what up I was with just going to say. Yeah. yeah, that's another thing that people need to know about Jim is Jim always has the best stories and he's extremely funny. So sit no, back, it, grab a it, beer. It, it, it's actually sort of, it's, it, most of it is um, just sort of the ridiculousness of, uh, because I don't really take it that seriously, but um, I have some really, really strong-willed horses that sort of do their own thing, and I'm sort of along for the ride. So <laughs> I just—that's yeah. what it looks like, Jim. I try not to stick out. I try not to be that guy, and sure enough, I'm, yeah. I'm that that guy. Oh, so. that ship may have sailed, sweetie. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Can not you... the guy in a good way. That guy. Oh yeah, that's the guy whose horse is loose. Yep. Uh, yeah. So, oh, Jim, can you tell the Rhett story in Germany, please? 
Well, the the red story in Germany. Red 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 is a really. He acts like he's afraid of the world. He's seventeen two. He's this giant monster of a horse. And and the first show I took him to, I was sent over by our federation. I had a big grant to go over. And the first show I went to, he was afraid of the flags. He was afraid of the flowers. He was afraid of the judges. And I I didn't even make it all the way around the ring. I finished fifty points behind second to last point oh the horse in front of me and then it was 100 points behind the horse in front of him so i was and i had to make that call back to our federation and just explain the situation so the next time i was going in the ring i was like that's it we we, we are not going to do this again we're going to be brave we're going to go around the ring so um <laughs> It was a long, long day. We got to the show at six in the morning and it's, in Germany, it's different. You don't get stalls. You just stand on the horse lorry and you wait your turn to go. So horses are getting off and coming back and getting off and coming back. And Red is not used to standing on a trailer that long. So we took the door off the, the lorry, off the lorry. Um, so we would not anticipated having a, a convertible. That was, that was an awkward uh, phone call to Michael. But um, he was actually quite brave in the ring and he was fabulous he was second place and so we got to do our first victory gallop um in in germany so um there was a driving show going on and uh so we had to go past the castle past the driving show um to the main ring and then there was like uh oompa german band and, and so we very majestically took our second place ribbon and galloped around behind the horses. And I was like psyched. It was like, great day, great day, except for the door that fell off the lorry. And then we go again past the band. We go past the carriages and we get back to the, to the lorry. And I'm just doing the happy dance because I'm like, yeah, you know, like we weren't a failure after all. And so I dismount and, um, and he was, you know, like, like I said, really happy with himself. And, and he'd been very brave. And I was, I was thrilled with how, how brave he was. So I um, then opened my, I jumped off, opened my hat box to take my hat off. And it made a little creaking sound. Now, granted, we have just been through this crazy, insane horse show and band and driving and just chaos and crowds the hat box <laughs> and so i was pulled off my heat seat drug through the mud for quite some time before i just eventually let go and he was gone now this was the same horse who was afraid of everything the week before he goes into the driving show is headed back out to the stadium is gone oh, no. for 15 minutes and i come back and he looks like a prize fighter he has like a few pieces of the bridle still on still around his neck and wrapped around his head and he came back and like I was head to toe mud like and and I had to admit yeah I'm the guy yeah that's that's yeah, yeah I'm with what him. was that second call to the federation like after they yeah. had just spent twenty five thousand dollars getting you over there for the second time yeah well uh you know that was that was that was another winner so once again I try not to actually stand out to be the idiot but even no matter like how good things are there's a yin and a yang i tend to notice when i'm competing before it's I never forget, all good before i forget it's samantha and morgan want to say hi to you they just they miss you and they wanted to say hi and i think you probably know who they are so um they're oh hi. awesome oh that's nice to hear thanks and hated them too <laughs> You fit right in here, Jim. <laughs> I see another future for you, Jim. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> well, he's going to need it the way the Federation feels about him right now. Yeah. I mean, geez. Oh, that yeah, was I'm, I'm, so I am going to need probably. Right. <laughs> Jim, what's the coolest place you ever showed? Once again. What's the coolest place you've ever showed? The coolest place? Yeah. You know, I, I, I would did cool is, is relative. Um, but I did a really funny uh, exhibition in uh, Washington D.C. a couple of weeks ago, and and um, <laughs> that that was, uh, the, uh, I mean, just uh, actually the, the owner had her own Vegas show, the owner of My Meridia, so she loves like the limelight. So 
we arrived a couple of weeks ago um, at the right outside of Washington DC belt line. We took a, um, so when we got there, we, um, we unloaded and then they said, okay, we need 67 ponies and the dressage horse to load up now to go into the city. So she, my mare is loaded with 67 ponies and we're caravanning <laughs> into Washington, DC. And this is Friday rush hour traffic. This is also the Friday night where there's a world series baseball game uh, going on. And like there's a Marine Corps marathon. There was so much going on that weekend. So it was complete care, chaos and anarchy on the road. And I'm just desperately trying to follow, follow them into the city. So eventually I like, we're just snarled in traffic. And so, so I'm trying to follow. I finally just dumped my car and sprinted following the, the van. Um, and so we, because they, they finally just stopped and just started unloading on the street. So there we are rush hour traffic in the middle of the city. And there we are unloading <laughs> My, my my dressage horse. So we're walking down the street, down the sidewalk. It just it it was surreal, and like I'm in a complete panic because like if I trip, if I fall, if I let her go, like like what'll happen? And then I I look up, and the owner is like, she's landed on Hollywood Boulevard. And I look at my horse, and she's like, this is it. I've arrived. My people, like my horse is such a city girl. She hates nature. She hates hacking. Like, and on the streets of DC, she had arrived. So she was yeah. like, that was actually, there was like, there was glitter. There were spotlights. There was a 20,000 seat arena. That was it. Oh, thank so. God. Civilization. <laughs> That's right. Why exactly. did they put farms in the country anyway? What kind of stupid thing is that? <laughs> Absolutely. So I really would like no, like she is completely the opposite of my horse. Rhett, Rhett would have had a nervous breakdown. Adaya was like, just absolutely like city, she girl, city girl. She was, she was at large and in charge. She finally yeah. hit the stage and uh, was appreciated for who she is. So <laughs> no judges and uh, lots of people clapping. The best. <laughs> and sparkly, um, Polo wraps, right, Jim? Yeah, all, all, all the uh, right. Swarovski Yeah, one crystals. has to watch the sparkly. Uh, yeah, she had 3,000 Swarovski crystals, like, sewn into each leg wrap. And, she did um, not. And bell boots. Yeah, she did. And, she did? She did, actually, yeah. yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't even know how much it cost, but <laughs> it, was, it was epic. <laughs> it was epic. I got a nice view of them at uh, I told Kentucky. you, like, the owner has had her own Vegas show. She's not afraid of a little sparkle. Yeah, <laughs> I don't want to ask what the show was. I really don't want to know what I'm afraid it's, to ask. It was Capital Challenge. <laughs> oh, oh, gotcha. The okay. Washington International. Uh, gotcha. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, he meant the show. I in meant Vegas. the show your owner had. That's the one I don't oh. want to know about. <laughs> oh, that show in Vegas. Yeah, yeah. I, there's no telling. It was a magician, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, she uh, she um she was an illusionist. She had a she had a Vegas show. She had a world tour. She was oh wow, wow. She was on the road and um yeah yeah yeah. I thought you were going to say burlesque. Like I was really going the burlesque route, but you know with all the crystal crystal. That and would things. be the horse, not the owner. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, before we let you go, tell yeah. us uh, what were yeah. the holidays like when you were a kid growing up? Were, were horses involved, or was that the day of no horses, or? Um, there, um, I, I, there, there was, I grew up in the suburbs. I was just a, you know, crazy kid in the suburbs. So I had a pretty uh, nor normal uh, life until I turned eight and then got on my first horse. And then after that, that was it. So then everything, every gift, every, uh, every spare moment, any other word out of my mouth was horse. So so, like I said, it was huge. Whether my parents and my brothers uh, wanted it or not, horses horses were were certainly part of every holiday. Is any of your brothers or anybody else into horses, and do they ever come see you ride? Um, n <laughs> no, no. Um, but you know the thing is, in the age of the internet, like, you, like it's it's everywhere. It's like everything's yeah. life. You can't get away with anything, and so so I'm sure. Like they've had to endure a dressage test or two. Um, and anytime you get on Facebook, she, my mayor is a little bit Facebook famous. So she's, she's everywhere. Escape is futile. So I think um, my family has uh, had to endure a lot of uh, my dressage career because I kept it under wraps for years, but it's sort of uh, like I said, in the age of uh, the internet and Facebook, it's, 
you know. Yeah, Jim, it's not under wraps doing. anymore. I got to tell you, you're, you're kind of out <laughs> there. Now. It's definitely not. No, <laughs> Jim, thank you for joining us and Merry Christmas. Have a great holiday. Thanks, Jim. All right. Hey, same, same Jim, to you guys. Jim, All right. Jim. Take care. Been fun. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. Take care. Okay. Bye. All right, guys, we have to do some prizes, but first we have to do a poem that apparently was written and sung by a certain someone's from the Healthy Critters show. Hedwig just got kidnapped by a reindeer walking home from the Healthy Critters show. You can say there's no such thing as Santa. (laughs) But we at Healthy Critters really know. I've been eating Christmas fruitcake and several kinds of tea. But my GI tract combustion brought this little dog to her knees. <sighs> when we found the empty collar and the ransom note in snow, there were hoof prints on the driveway and a voice on the roof saying, ho, ho, ho. Now Patty's getting lunch lines to lasso the sleigh and dog. Hedwig Serpin grabbed her cell phone, Jennifer Rebels to analog. It's not Christmas without Hedwig. She's the show's comedian. If we can't rescue Hedwig, will her place be taken by Glenn? (gasps) Now Santa wants to parlay for my quick release. Because my guests were barking, then Shorty won't get any tea. <laughs> so we make a deal with Santa, and this is the result. Hedwig returns to healthy critters, and the reindeer get a free nutritional consult. <laughs> Very well done. Yay. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and Jennifer for putting in the sound effects. They were oh, great. I know. That was awesome. excellent. They're awesome. Excellent. <laughs> Well that done. is not what it sounded like when we did it. <laughs> <laughs>